The Galactic Confederation's most prestigious military academy was abuzz with excitement. It was the first day of the new academic cycle, and the fresh-faced recruits from a dozen different species were eager to begin their training. But today was special for another reason they were to receive a lecture from the legendary Zixtal, a decorated war veteran who had fought alongside the infamous humans. As the auditorium filled with chattering aliens of all shapes and sizes, a hush fell over the crowd when the doors swung open. In walked, or rather, floated Zixtal. The Corleone was an impressive sight, with his gelatinous, translucent body pulsing with bioluminescent patterns that spoke of barely contained excitement. Greetings, future defenders of the Confederation Zixtal's voice reverberated through the room, a curious mix of gurgling and crystalline chimes. I hope you're all comfortable because you're in for a wild ride today. We're going to talk about the craziest, most terrifying, and downright insane species in the known universe, humans. A ripple of nervous laughter spread through the audience. Humans were something of a boogeyman in Confederation space respected, feared, and more than a little misunderstood. Zixtal's body flashed a deep purple, the Corleone equivalent of a smirk. Oh, you think that's funny? Well, buckle up, buttercups. By the time I'm done, you'll either be begging to fight alongside humans or running screaming back to your home planets. He paused for dramatic effect, his tendrils swaying gently. Now, who can tell me what classification Earth falls under? A timid Vorxian in the front row raised a tentacle. D. Deathworld, sir. Deathworld? Deathworld Zixtal's body pulsed an alarming shade of red. That's like calling a supernova a warm day. Earth isn't just a death world, it's the death world. The planet that makes other death worlds look like luxury resorts. The auditorium was silent now, all eyes and various other sensory organs fixed on the veteran. Let me paint you a picture, Zixtal continued, his color shifting to a storytelling blue. Imagine a planet where the very air can kill you, where invisible creatures so small they can't be seen without special equipment can bring down the mightiest warrior where the ground itself occasionally decides to shake everything apart when mountains explode, and where giant masses of angry water regularly try to wipe out coastal civilizations. He let out a sound that might have been a laugh, but to the alien students, it sounded more like someone strangling a harmonica. And that's just the planet itself. We haven't even gotten to the wildlife yet. A brave Zentari student spoke up, her antennae twitching nervously. Surely the wildlife can't be that bad, sir. I mean, we have some pretty dangerous creatures in the Confederation. Zixtal's body rippled with amusement. Oh, my sweet summer lava. Let me tell you about the time I went on a relaxing nature walk with my human friend, Sarah. The veteran's body shimmered, projecting a holographic image of a lush forest. It looked peaceful enough at first. Sarah was chatting away about the local flora and fauna, pointing out various plants and animals. Then, out of nowhere, she tackled me to the ground. The hologram changed to show a massive, furry creature with razor-sharp claws and teeth. That, my friends, is what humans call a bear. Apparently, we had wandered into its territory, and it was not happy about it. Zixtal's color shifted to a tense yellow. Now, any sensible being would run away or play dead. But not Sarah. Oh no, she stood her ground, made herself look big, and started yelling at the bear. Yelling. At. A. Bear. The auditorium erupted in a mixture of gasps and nervous laughter, and you know what? It worked. The bear, this enormous killing machine, actually turned tail and ran away. When I asked Sarah how she knew that would work, she just shrugged and said, sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. If it hadn't, I'd have punched it in the nose. Zixtal's body vibrated with what could only be described as a full body eye roll, punched it, in the nose, like it was some misbehaving pet. The Zentari students' antennae were practically tied in knots now. But, but that's insane. How can they live like that? Insane. Ha! Huh. That's just a Tuesday for humans Zixtal cortled. Let me tell you about their sports. For the next hour, Zixtal regaled the increasingly horrified and fascinated students with tales of human extremes. He told them about extreme sports where humans hurled themselves off cliffs with nothing but a piece of fabric to slow their fall. He described how they willingly entered burning buildings to save others, dove into treacherous waters for fun, and deliberately sought out the most dangerous places on their already deadly planet for adventure. And don't even get me started on their medical practices, Zixtal said, his color a mix of admiration and disbelief, 
They literally cut themselves open to fix internal problems. Sometimes they even replace entire organs. And the patient is just unconscious during the whole thing. A glick's tore in the back raised its eye stalks. But sir, how do they survive as a species if their planet and their own activities are so dangerous? Zixtal's body pulsed with a warm, appreciative glow. Ah, now that's the real kicker. You see, all this danger, all this adversity, it's made humans into something truly spectacular. They're adaptable, resilient, and incredibly innovative. Where we see insurmountable obstacles, they see challenges to overcome. He projected another hologram this time of a human city gleaming under the stars. They've taken their death world and built civilizations that touch the sky. They've harnessed the very forces that once threatened to destroy them. And when they looked up at the stars, they didn't see an impassable void. They saw their next frontier. Zixtal's voice took on a more serious tone. That's why humans are both our greatest allies and our most formidable potential enemies. They don't know when to quit. They don't understand the concept of impossible. And most importantly, they have an unshakable belief that they can always find a way to win. The veteran's color shifted to a deep, respectful blue. I've fought alongside humans in some of the worst battles this galaxy has ever seen. I've watched them pull off strategies so crazy, so utterly insane, that they shouldn't have worked. But they did, because humans made them work. He paused, letting his words sink in. There's an old human saying where there's a will, there's a way it took me years to understand what that really meant. For humans, willpower isn't just a noble concept, it's a tangible force. They can will themselves to survive situations that would kill any other species. They can will themselves to keep fighting long after their bodies should have given up. A Dravik student, its scales shimmering with a mix of fear and awe, spoke up. Sir, if humans are so formidable, why aren't they ruling the Confederation? Why haven't they conquered us all? Zixtal's body rippled with what might have been laughter. Ah, now that's the beautiful irony of it all. For all their tenacity, for all their capacity for violence and conquest, humans are also capable of incredible compassion, cooperation, and self-restraint. He projected a series of images humans working alongside various alien species, building settlements, conducting scientific experiments, engaging in cultural exchanges. You see, humans don't want to rule the galaxy. They want to explore it, understand it, be a part of it. They're just as capable of extending a helping hand as they are of making a fist. And that, more than anything else, is what makes them truly remarkable. Zixtal's color shifted to a warm, encouraging orange. That's why it's so important for you, as future defenders of the Confederation, to understand humans. Not just to be prepared if they ever become our enemies, but to learn from them as our allies. To understand that the same drive that makes them terrifying opponents also makes them invaluable friends. He paused, his bioluminescent patterns swirling in a complex dance of emotions. I remember the first time I saw a human cry. It was after a particularly brutal battle. We'd won, but at a terrible cost. This human soldier, a towering giant of muscle and armor, knelt down beside a fallen comrade and alien from a species they'd only met a few standard cycles ago and wept. The auditorium was dead silent, every being hanging on Zixtal's words. I didn't understand it at first. I thought perhaps the human was injured or malfunctioning in some way. But then they looked up at me, their eyes shining with tears, and said something I'll never forget. Every life is a universe of possibilities. When one is extinguished, all of existence is diminished. Zixtal's body pulsed with a deep, somber purple. That's when I truly began to understand humans. They feel everything so intensely. Their capacity for violence is matched only by their capacity for love. Their drive to conquer is balanced by their desire to protect. Their walking contradictions, bundles of conflicting impulses and desires, all wrapped up in a package that can survive things that would kill most other species. He brightened suddenly, his color shifting to an amused pink. Of course, that doesn't mean they're invincible. Oh no, they have plenty of weaknesses. Did you know they can be incapacitated by inhaling particulate matter from certain plants? They call it allergies. Imagine a species that can shrug off plasma burns brought low by pollen. The tension in the room broke, and a wave of laughter rippled through the audience. And don't even get me started on their dietary habits, Sixtal continued, clearly on a roll now. They deliberately consume substances that are toxic to them, for fun, 
They call it alcohol, and apparently it makes them temporarily stupid, as if they needed the help, or laughter, louder this time. Even the most nervous students were starting to relax. But you know what the craziest thing about humans is, Zix Tal asked, his voice dropping to a conspiracy whisper. The students leaned in, eager to hear more. They domesticated predators, apex predators. They took descendants of pack-hunting carnivores and made them into pets. He projected an image of a human lounging on a couch, a furry quadruped curled up on their lap. They call this one a dog. Looks cute, doesn't it? Well, let me tell you, I've seen one of these dogs tear through a Cronaxian battle droid like it was made of food wrappings. And the human. They praised it and called it a good boy. The auditorium erupted in a mixture of laughter and disbelieving exclamations. Zix Tal let the commotion die down before continuing, his tone becoming more serious again. But for all their quirks and contradictions, for all the ways they can seem utterly alien to us, Humans have something truly special. Something that, in my experience, no other species in the galaxy can match. He paused for effect, his body glowing with a warm, admiring light. Humans have hope. Unshakable, unreasonable, illogical hope. They hope when all seems lost. They hope in the face of impossible odds. They hope even when every shred of evidence says they should despair. The veteran's voice took on a tone of wonder. I've seen a lone human stand against an entire platoon of Vexcar shock troops, armed with nothing but a primitive projectile weapon and sheer determination. When we finally fought our way to their position, do you know what they said? What took you so long? I was starting to think I'd have to win this war all by myself. Zixtal shook his gelatinous head in a very human gesture. Any other species would have surrendered, or, at best, tried to delay the enemy as long as possible before inevitably being overrun. But this human, they genuinely believed they could win. And that belief, that hope, it's contagious, it spreads to those around them, making everyone fight harder, push further, achieve the impossible. He looked around the auditorium, his gaze seeming to meet each student individually. That's the real lesson I want you to take away from this, cadets. The thing that makes humans truly unique isn't their physical resilience, or their adaptability, or even their capacity for violence. It's their spirit. Their unbreakable, unshakable spirit. Zixtao's body pulsed with a rainbow of colors, reflecting the complexity of his emotions. In all my years of service, in all the battles I've fought and the wonders I've seen, nothing has ever come close to matching the sheer awe I feel when I see a human facing impossible odds with a smile on their face and hope in their heart. He projected one final image, a diverse group of aliens and humans, standing together, facing some unseen challenge. This is why humans are such valuable members of the Confederation. Not because they're unstoppable warriors or brilliant scientists, though they can be both. It's because they make us all better. They challenge us to be more than we are, to see possibilities where we once saw only obstacles. Zixtao's voice softened, taking on an almost reverent tone. There's another human saying I've come to love the stars are not for the faint of heart humans embody their philosophy. They look at the vast, uncaring universe with all its dangers and challenges, and they don't cower. They don't hide. They step forward, arms wide, and say, bring it on. He chuckled, a sound like tinkling crystals. Of course, half the time they have no idea what they're actually up against. But that's never stopped them before, and I doubt it ever will. As Zixtal concluded his lecture, the auditorium erupted in applause. The students, who had begun the session nervous and skeptical, were now buzzing with excitement and curiosity about their human allies. The veteran gave them a moment to settle down before speaking again. Now I know I've given you a lot to think about. Some of you might be excited to work with humans, while others might be terrified at the prospect. Both reactions are perfectly valid. He pulsed with a reassuring blue light. But remember this, whether you end up fighting alongside humans, negotiating with them, or just trying to understand them, always approach them with an open mind. They may surprise you, they may confuse you, and they will almost certainly exasperate you. But I can promise you one thing. Life with humans around is never, ever boring. Zixtal's body shimmered with a mix of amusement and affection. And who knows, you might just find yourself becoming a little more human in the process. Trust me, there are worse fates in this universe. As the students filed out of the auditorium, chattering excitedly about everything they'd learned, 
Zixtal noticed a small group lingering behind. They approached him hesitantly, led by the brave Zentari who had spoken up earlier. Excuse me, sir, she said, her antennae twitching nervously. We were wondering, do you have any more stories about your adventures with humans? Zixtal's body lit up with delight. Oh, my dear, I have enough stories to fill a library, but perhaps we should save those for another time. After all, if I told you everything now, what would I talk about in next cycle's lecture? The students looked at each other in excitement. You mean you'll be back to tell us more? Of course, Zixtal chuckled. Someone has to prepare you for the wonderful madness that comes with having humans as allies. Now, run along. I'm sure you have plenty of other classes to attend. As the last of the students left, Zixtal floated over to the window, gazing out at the bustling spaceport beyond the academy grounds. Ships of all shapes and sizes darted about, a testament to the diversity of the Galactic Confederation. But his eyes were drawn to a sleek, angular vessel that stood out from the rest a human ship. Well, I'll be a Vauxian's uncle, he muttered to himself, his body pulsing with surprise and excitement. Is that the intrepid? As if in answer to his question, a familiar figure emerged from the ship. Even from this distance, Zix Tal could recognize the confident stride and wild mop of red hair. Sarah, his old human friend and comrade in arms, had come to visit. Zixtal's body shimmered with anticipation as he made his way out of the auditorium and towards the spaceport. By the time he reached the landing pad, Sarah was already there, grinning from ear to ear. Zix, you old blob of jelly, she exclaimed, arms wide open. How the hell are you? Zixtal's body rippled with joy as Sarah enveloped him in a hug. To any observing aliens, it might have looked like the human was trying to wrestle with a sentient lava lamp, but to the old friends, it was a warm reunion. Sarah, you crazy ape Zixtal gurgled affectionately. What brings you to this corner of the galaxy? Last I heard, you were off exploring some uncharted death trap of a solar system. Sarah's grin widened. Oh, you know me. Can't sit still for long. Besides, I heard a rumor that a certain gelatinous war hero was corrupting the minds of young cadets with tales of human insanity. Couldn't miss that, could I? Zixtal's body flushed a deep purple, the Qualian equivalent of a blush. I was simply providing them with a comprehensive education on their allies. Can't have them fainting in shock the first time they see a human drink coffee, can we? Sarah threw her head back and laughed, a sound that never failed to fascinate Zixtal. Humans were the only species he knew that expressed joy by making such a raucous noise. Oh man, I would pay good credits to see that. Speaking of which, got time for a cup? I brought some of the good stuff from Earth. Zixtal's body pulsed with a mix of excitement and trepidation. You know I can't resist your toxic bean juice. Lead the way, you mad woman. As they made their way to a nearby cafe, Zixtal couldn't help but notice the stares they were attracting. It wasn't every day that the aliens saw a human and a Qualian strolling along like old pals, trading insults and laughing at inside jokes. Once they were settled at a table, Sarah pulled out a thermos and poured two cups of steaming coffee. She slid one over to Zix Tal, who eyed it warily. Come on, you big baby Sarah teased. It's not going to kill you, probably. Zix Tal's body rippled in what might have been a sigh. That's what you said about the hot sauce incident, and I still haven't regained feeling in my lower tentacles. Sarah snorted. Hey, how was I supposed to know it would react that way with your biology? Besides, you have to admit, it was pretty funny watching you zoom around the ship like a deflating balloon. Yes, hilarious Zixtal deadpanned, but there was an undercurrent of amusement in his tone. He cautiously extended a tendril and dipped it into the coffee, absorbing a small amount. His body immediately lit up with a burst of vibrant colours. By the cosmic void, that strong... Sarah sipped her own coffee with a satisfied smile. Nothing but the best for my favorite alien. So, tell me about these cadets. Any promising future heroes in the bunch? Zixtal's colors settled into a thoughtful blue. They're young, naive, and terrified of their own shadows. But there's potential there. A few of them even asked for more stories about humans after the lecture. Oh, Sarah leaned forward, intrigued. And what kinds of stories did you tell them? All good things, I hope. Zixtal's body rippled with mischievous patterns. Oh, you know, just the usual. How humans are basically indestructible death machines with a bizarre fondness for cute animals and a complete disregard for self-preservation. Sarah nearly choked on her coffee. 
Zix, you're going to give those poor kids nightmares. Nonsense, Zixtal replied, his color shifting to a smug yellow. I merely provided them with an accurate portrayal of human capabilities and eccentricities. Would you rather I lied and told them humans are delicate flowers who faint at the sight of danger? Sarah considered this for a moment, then shrugged. Fair point. Though I shudder to think what they imagine we're like now. Probably picture us as some kind of unstoppable warrior race. Zixtal's body pulsed with amusement. Well, they're not entirely wrong, are they? I've seen you bench press a Cranaxian battle droid. That was one time Sarah protested, but she was grinning. And it was an emergency. Besides, you're one to talk. I seem to recall a certain Corlian single-handedly taking out an entire squad of Vexcar shock troops by engulfing them and short-circuiting their armor. Zixtal's color deepened to a proud orange. Ah, yes, good times. Though I must admit, I did have some indigestion afterward. Vexcar armor does not agree with my delicate constitution. They shared a laugh, drawing curious glances from the other patrons of the café. To most of the aliens present, the sight of a human and a Corlian sharing jokes over cups of a strange, steaming liquid was both fascinating and slightly terrifying. As their laughter died down, Sarah's expression turned more serious. You know, Zix, sometimes I wonder if we did the right thing, joining the Confederation. Don't get me wrong, I'm glad we did, but sometimes I feel like we don't quite fit in. Zixtal's body pulsed with a comforting blue glow. My dear Sarah, that's precisely why your presence is so valuable. You humans have a unique perspective that challenges the rest of us to think differently, to push boundaries we didn't even know existed. Sarah smiled, but there was a hint of sadness in her eyes. I know, and I'm proud of what we've accomplished together. It's just, sometimes I miss Earth. The simple things, you know? Rain, grass under my feet, the sound of birds in the morning. Zixtal extended a tendril, gently patting Sarah's hand. I understand. It's not easy being so far from home, surrounded by beings who can never fully comprehend your experiences. But remember, Sarah, you're not alone. You have friends out here, allies who value you not despite your differences, but because of them. Sarah's smile brightened. Thanks, Zix. You always know how to cheer me up. Even if you do look like a lava lamp having a seizure when you're trying to be comforting, Zixtal's body flashed indignantly. I'll have you know that this is a highly sophisticated method of emotional communication. It's not my fault your species relies on crude facial contortions to express feelings. Crude facial contortions, Sarah gasped in mock offense. I'll show you crude, she proceeded to make a series of increasingly ridiculous faces, each more exaggerated than the last. Zixtal's body rippled with laughter. Stop, stop. You're going to traumatize the poor cafe patrons. I think that Zentari in the corner is about to faint. Indeed, a young Zentari at a nearby table was staring at them with a mix of horror and fascination, its antennae twitching wildly. Sarah composed herself, but couldn't suppress a grin. Sorry about that, kid she called out to the Zentari. Just demonstrating some human communication techniques. Don't try this at home. The Zentari nodded slowly, clearly unsure how to respond to this bizarre interaction. Zixtal shook his gelatinous head in amusement. And this, my friend, is why I had to warn the cadets about human unpredictability. One moment you're a fierce warrior, the next you're making faces like a deranged Gorgolian swamp beast. Hey, versatility is our specialty, Sarah replied with a wink. Speaking of which, how long are you stuck here at the academy? Any chance you could get away for a bit of adventure? The intrepid sensors picked up some interesting readings from a nearby nebula. Could be fun to check out. Zixtal's body pulsed with excitement, then dimmed slightly. As tempting as that sounds, I'm afraid I'm committed here for the next few cycles. These cadets need all the preparation they can get. Sarah nodded understandingly. Fair enough. Can't leave the kids without their daily dose of human madness, can we? She paused, a mischievous glint in her eye. You know, I've got an idea. How about I stick around for a few days? Give your cadets a first-hand look at the insanity you've been telling them about. Zixtal's body flashed a brilliant array of colors, a Corlian expression of both excitement and alarm. Oh, stars, Sarah, I'm not sure the Academy is ready for that. You might give the poor Commandant a heart attack, or whatever the equivalent is for a Dravix. Come on, it'll be fun, Sarah insisted, leaning forward conspiratorially. Think about it. Your lessons come to life. A real 
live human specimen for them to observe and interact with. It's perfect. Zixtal's colors swirled in contemplation. Well, I suppose it could be educational, and it would certainly drive home some of the points I've been trying to make his body pulsed with sudden amusement. Plus, I must admit, I'm rather curious to see how they'll react to you. That's the spirit Sarah grinned, clapping her hands together. So, what's first on the curriculum? Want me to demonstrate human strength? Ooh, or maybe we could set up an obstacle course. I could show them how we navigate in different gravities. Zixtal's body rippled with what could only be described as a chuckle. Let's start small, shall we? Perhaps a QA session first. I shudder to think what might happen if we unleash you on an obstacle course right away. Just then, a group of cadets entered the cafe, chattering excitedly among themselves. They stopped short when they spotted Zixtal, their eyes and various other sensory organs widening in surprise and admiration. Speaking of cadets, Zixtal murmured, then raised his voice. Ah, students, perfect timing. Come, join us. There's someone I'd like you to meet. The cadets approached cautiously, their gazes flicking between Zixtal and Sarah with a mix of curiosity and trepidation. The cadets, allow me to introduce Sarah Thompson, a decorated human veteran and one of the finest warriors I've had the privilege of serving alongside Zixtal announced, his body glowing with pride. Sarah stood up, offering a friendly smile and a wave. Hey there, nice to meet you all. Don't worry, I don't bite, unless you're made of chocolate. The cadets exchanged confused glances, clearly unsure whether this was some sort of human threat or an attempt at humor. Zixtal's body pulsed with amusement. That's a joke, cadets. Humans often use humor to put others at ease. Though I must say, Sarah, your success rate is questionable at best. Hey, can't blame a girl for trying Sarah shrugged, still grinning. So, who wants to ask the scary human a question? Come on, don't be shy. I promise I'm mostly harmless. There was a moment of hesitation before the brave Zentari from earlier stepped forward, her antennae twitching nervously. Um, is it true that humans can survive being set on fire? Sarah blinked in surprise, then burst out laughing. Well, that's certainly jumping in at the deep end. Where'd you hear that one? The Zentari's antennae drooped slightly. Professor Zixtal mentioned it in his lecture. He said humans have been known to continue fighting even when engulfed in flames. Sarah shot Zixtal an amused look. Oh, he did, did he? Well, let's clear this up. Can humans survive being set on fire? Technically, yes, but it's not something we make a habit of. We're tough, but we're not fireproof. She rolled up her sleeve, revealing a faded burn scar on her forearm. Got this during a particularly nasty skirmish with some Vex car troops. Their plasma weapons pack quite a punch. Did it stop me? Nah, but it hurt like hell, and I wouldn't recommend it as a hobby. The cadets leaned in, fascinated by the scar. A glick's tore in the back raised an eye stalk. But, how did you keep fighting? Surely the pain would have been incapacitating. Sarah's expression turned more serious. Pain is complicated for humans. Yes, it hurts. Yes, it can slow us down. But when the adrenaline's pumping, when lives are on the line, pain becomes secondary. We can push through it, ignore it even, at least for a while. She glanced at Zixtal, a wry smile playing on her lips. Of course we pay for it later. I spent a good week in the med bay after that particular stunt. But in the moment, all that mattered was getting my team out alive. Zixtal's body pulsed with a warm, admiring glow. And that, cadets, is what makes humans such formidable allies. Their ability to push beyond their physical limitations, to ignore pain and fear in pursuit of a greater goal, is truly remarkable. The Zentari's antennae perked up with curiosity. Is that why humans are so reckless? Because you can ignore pain? Sarah chuckled. Not exactly. We feel pain just like any other species. We're not reckless because we can ignore pain. We ignore pain because sometimes we have to be reckless. When the situation calls for it, we'll push ourselves beyond what seems possible. A Dravik's cadet, his scales shimmering with a mix of awe and confusion, spoke up next. But why? Why take such risks? Surely there are safer ways to achieve objectives. Sarah's expression softened. Sometimes, yes, we're not adrenaline junkies looking for the next thrill. Well, most of us aren't. Anyway, she winked at Zixtal, who rippled in what might have been an eye roll. But when it comes down to it, when lives are at stake, when the fate of a mission hangs in the balance, 
will do whatever it takes. She leaned forward, her voice taking on a more passionate tone. You see, for humans, the possibility of failure is often scarier than any physical danger. We'd rather risk our lives than live with the knowledge that we didn't do everything we could. Zixtal's body pulsed with a complex swirl of colors. It's a double-edged sword, cadets. This human drive, this relentless determination, is both their greatest strength and their greatest vulnerability. It makes them incredible allies, but it also means they often need us to rein them in, to remind them of their limits. Sarah nodded in agreement. Zix is right. We're not invincible, no matter what the stories might say. We need our allies, our friends from other species, to watch our backs, to pull us back from the brink when we push too far. The Zentari tilted her head, Antene twitching thoughtfully. So, it's a partnership. Humans push the boundaries, and the rest of us keep you grounded. Exactly, Sarah beamed. That's why the Galactic Confederation works so well. We all bring something unique to the table. Humans might be the crazy ones willing to charge headfirst into danger, but we'd be lost without the wisdom, caution, and unique abilities of our alien allies. Zixtal's body glowed with approval. Well said, Sarah. You see, cadets, this is the most important lesson you can learn about interspecies cooperation. It's not about one species being superior to others. It's about how we complement each other, how our differences make us stronger together than we ever could be apart. The cadets nodded, their earlier trepidation replaced by genuine interest and budding excitement. Even the Dravics, typically the most reserved of the group, seemed to be leaning in, eager to hear more. Sarah grinned, clapping her hands together. All right, who's up for some practical demonstrations? I promise I won't set anything on fire, probably. Zix Tao's body flashed with alarm. Sarah, remember what we discussed about starting small. But it was too late. The cadets were already clamoring with excitement, peppering Sarah with questions about human capabilities and suggesting increasingly outlandish demonstrations. As Sarah began to regale the cadets with tales of her adventures, occasionally punctuated by Zixtal's long-suffering sighs and clarifications, it was clear that this impromptu lesson was far from over. The Galactic Confederation's newest cadets were about to get a crash course in human unpredictability, and Zixtal had a feeling the Academy would never be quite the same again. In the background, the cafe owner watched the unfolding scene with a mixture of amusement and resignation. It wasn't the first time the establishment had hosted unusual interspecies gatherings, and it certainly wouldn't be the last. But as the sound of Sarah's laughter mingled with the astonished exclamations of the cadets and Zixtal's colourful commentary, there was a sense that something special was happening. This, after all, was how understanding was built. One story, one demonstration, one shared laugh at a time. And in a galaxy as vast and diverse as theirs, such moments of connection were more precious than all the rare minerals and advanced technologies they might discover in their travels. As the impromptu lesson continued, stretching long into the night cycle, one thing became abundantly clear the future of the Galactic Confederation was in good hands. Hands that might occasionally set things on fire or push the boundaries of what seemed possible, but hands that were also ready to reach out across the stars, to forge bonds of friendship and alliance that could withstand any challenge the universe might throw at them. And really, in a galaxy full of wonders and terrors, what more could anyone ask for?